The Passover season is on the horizon, and we know that we need to take special care in finding that sin and rooting it out. We know that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Sins is defined in the Bible as transgression of the law. We learn God's truth, way, and law by, stand, by studying the scriptures, but sometimes we fall backwards into sin. And yes, even sometimes we run to it. Satan is known by many names in the Bible. The great deceiver, the destroyer, the accuser, the adversary. And for the sake of this message, we're going to call him another name, the hunter. Satan wants us all destroyed. He has no love for God's people and will do his best to isolate us and to get us to reject God's authority. He does this by helping us believe that we should give in to our own desires and lusts by setting up snares and traps along our way. We see in Psalms 38 verse 12, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, Psalms 38 verse 12, Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. These snares can take many forms. God shows us how to avoid these types of snares, even though they are so inviting at times, we don't trip, but we run to them. The title of this message is, Let It Go. Have you ever heard of the practice of snaring a monkey with a coconut? This is how it works. The hunter will take a coconut and cut out a hole that is just big enough for a monkey's hand to fit through. Once the monkey's hand is closed, he will not be able to pull it out. The hunter will tie this coconut onto a tree. Next, the hunter will place a handful of peanuts, or in some accounts I found rice, around the coconut and leave a trail along to the nearby forest. The hunter would then sit back and patiently wait. These snares are set up on trails that monkeys frequent. It might surprise you to know that these snares are not put in odd places or hidden, but they're out in the open for them to see. The sprinkled treats outside the snare lure the poor creature to it. Remembering that the hole is just big enough to reach in and pull out a very small amount, but like most primates, they won't do that. It's not in their nature. They want to get as much as possible and pull it out. But when they do that, they become trapped, and they can't let go. We need to let go of these snares. Now refusing to let go of the tree, the monkey is trapped. He will then scream, shout, and alert the hunter, and those that will come along with him and capture this poor creature. This monkey will lose its freedom forever. The fate of the primate varies from being sold to a zoo or sold to someone who intends to eat him. The saddest part of this whole scenario is the monkey could have let go at any time. All he had to do was let it go. But he won't let go of temptation. And do you know what? He can't just bring himself to it. He's so afraid of losing something that just a few moments ago he didn't even know existed. And now he's going to die for it. Do we, brethren, do this with bad habits or treats, or perhaps that we shouldn't be near? I would like for all of us to think about this. Why do you suppose a hunter used these things to entice us to approach the snare? Perhaps we should take stock by finding out what ensnares us so we can avoid the hunter more easily. When I was about seven years old, my family came into the Church of God while living in Corpus Christi. The family was very poor, and if my father didn't catch the food, we usually didn't eat it. He was an incredible fisherman, and we usually had lots of shrimp, crab, and other kind of fish. When we came into the church, we found out about the, the laws of clean and unclean, and we figured we'd do it one more time just to get it out of our system. My dad, again the incredible fisherman that he was, was able to go out 
and catch a huge amount of shrimp and other things and prepared it for the family. We were very excited because we knew this was going to be our last unclean meal. Apparently, I developed a humongous shellfish allergy that day. And I swole up to cartoon size, almost stopped breathing. The rest of the family got sick. And God cured me of my desire for shellfish. <laughs> for some, clean unclean meats is a deal breaker. But I'm glad and very thankful that God removed that temptation completely. Now, I can still use it to fish. It doesn't bother me at all, but I do not care to eat it. So what kind of things are snares to us? There are many things that are harmful to us and easy to stay away from, like illegal drugs, murder, or, as for me, eating shrimp. The list can go on and on, but I won't use our time looking at the obvious, but I would like to ask you about the not-so-obvious. Could it be... Telling white lies because telling a small lie is easier. Do we believe that we respect, excuse me, that we deserve respect from others, but we have no problem talking about other people and their faults? Do you justify participating in activities that are not exactly wrong, but are not good either? Just how many alcoholic drinks are too many to have in one day or one week? Should you have really watched that movie or read that famous book? Do you want to look like everyone else and try to fit in with the world around you? Do you have to have the latest styles of questionable clothing, the wrong kinds of music or entertainment? Do these simple things remove us from God's presence and trap us so we can't get away? We should be seeking to be more Christ-like and have his light shine in us by our actions as well as our activities. Society today pushes our youth to be their own person, but in reality what society is actually doing is telling our youth not to be like our parents or our religion. Our religion excuse me. You find this mentality expressed freely at our schools, colleges, and universities. For example, I went back to college in my 30s and was the oldest student in many of my classes. I am very grateful that I went back as an older student because I was more mature and I didn't really have the desire to fit in. My program required me to take a humanities course and found one that fit my schedule perfectly. The course was taught by a short and sweet lady, or so I thought until the class started. The very cl first class, she let us know that we needed to stop thinking like our parents and the outdated religion and that book, the Bible. We needed to explore everything, especially what our parents told us not to do. She preached of the joys of promiscuity and dabbling in drugs, as well as promoting experimentation and other things. I asked the teacher, what exactly was the purpose of this class? She cheeringly told us it's so we could learn to be ourselves. And once we figured that out, nobody could tell us to be different. I smiled, and as some of you know, I have a way of saying what I'm thinking. And I said, thank you, ma'am, but I don't agree with what you're saying. I believe that God has instructed us in a way to do things and I will not ever conform to your way of thinking. I don't appreciate you telling us that we have to discount the Bible and our parents' teachings. I think that that's what makes us a good society. I had asked you before if this would damage our grade, and you said it wouldn't, so I'm going to hold you to that. After the class, some of the students came up to me and then said they did not know how to react because this class was required for them too, for their program. I told them that if, I told them that God was their ultimate judge and it was him that they had to please. I felt exactly what, this is how I feel exactly what some of our higher institutions are doing. So I think you need to be aware. 
forgot to, excuse me, if I forget to say I got an A in that class, apologize about that. I just, like, what? Well, we should remember that we are pilgrims in this world and not part of it. Let's go to 1 Peter 2, and we're going to start in verse 12, excuse me, verse 11. 1 Peter 2, verse 11. Again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshy lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may say, by your good works, which they observe, and glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay, I'm going to back up to verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who were once not a people, but now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We see there are lots of snares in this world. Don't be like the monkey that must satiate his desire to have what is inside and not let go. Act like that chosen generation that God spoke to us about in 1 Peter. Cast out your leaven. Change your past. Change your ways and let Christ live in you. When you see temptation, let it go. <laughs>